Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Chevy meets Bling. Tonight, I'm inviting all of you to a party. Not just any party, it is a swinging vintage Halloween party at the historical Oriole Theater. I would like to thank Monica from Up All Night DIY and Tracy from Ephemore for joining me at this swinging vintage Halloween party. The links to their channels, this playlist, and places where you can shop Tracy's beautiful products will be in the description box below. I've been wanting to do something with this frame for a long time. And when I set eyes on these beautiful downloads from Tracy at FMWAR, I knew exactly what I was going to do. I said to myself, Dawn, let's build a theater. <laughs> so scrap wood, you know I keep my scrap wood, and this little piece of wood is going to turn with that frame into a great big not great big it's gonna be itty bitty teeny tiny fabulous theater the oreo theater so uh, bits and scraps i've cut uh, an archway out to match my frame i'm adding detail molding and i'm building the entire structure and i'm building it so that it has some depth to it so that it's kind of like a shadow box and when my shadow box is complete i am going to take something called wood restore which is a bondo for uh, wood and fill in all my nooks and crannies and cracks and crevices and let it harden and it hardens fast and I'm gonna sand her all down and get her ready for what that's right we're gonna paint we're gonna paint the beautiful theater <laughs> I am painting the entire back of the theater and I'm gonna keep saying that because I love saying it theater with just a black flat house paint and then the front of the theater the archway is going to get a lovely primer coat of uh, light colored chalk paint because it will be getting a beautiful wallpaper adhered to it this paper in particular and this comes from tracy's wonderful company fmore and uh, make sure you check out that company because oh my gosh you guys amazing things so cool then the rest of the facade of our theater will get painted with black chalk paint now on to our focal point i am making the back wall of this theater <laughs> a brick wall and you can see these little foam brick panels they are going to be on uh, Etsy shortly and they come a little bit thicker than what you see here and they come in a set of four and I have shaved them down sliced them down so they're a nice thin brick veneer and they take hot glue they take spray paint and I am simply hot gluing them in a brick brick formation up the side of my wall and make sure when you use these things you hot glue the edges really well and you hold down until every bit of it dries completely you can also see that at the bottom i have a line drawn that is where my floor is going yes all theaters need a floor that's coming next but first we paint yet again we paint and this lovely chalk paint color is hazelnut kind of like my coffee and i i just love the look it gives because it looks like an old old brick weathered wall and use a tiny brush when you're painting these little brick veneer because you need to get in all the nooks and cranny and as i said you can spray paint but uh i did not find a flat spray paint in the color i wanted so i said chalk paint it is and we will paint every bit of this brick veneered wall and it'll probably need a second coat as well all historical theaters have ornately designed floors. The Oriole is no different. If this piece of wood looks familiar to you, it is the half round cut out of our archway. It is now becoming our floor. I am painting the rise and I'm painting the bottom. The design I'm creating for our beautiful floor is a checkerboard pattern and it's going to be a three tone checkerboard pattern. I am cutting out tiny little squares out of my sticky stencil medium and I'm going to apply them to the bare wood of the flooring and you have to be very careful very precise and get them in line and lay out a sticker for each and every area that I want 
to remain that wood tone. Next step, we burnish well and we apply a very healthy coat of matte Mod Podge to seal my little tiny squares, my little tiles, because we can't have any bleeding under these tiles or it will totally ruin the look of the theater floor and we don't want that. So next, after we're totally dry with that old Mod Podge, we move on to designating our black tiles. You have to figure out your pattern ahead of time so you don't accidentally put black where the white goes and vice versa. So I'm painting all my tiles black that need to be black. And then I will do the same with my white. Nice thing about the white is it's already predetermined. Anything that's not painted, you paint it white. And then we have a floor. Once you have this beautiful floor, you have to protect it. So <laughs> I'm adding a, a nice coat of antique wax and it just makes it look aged and beautiful just like our old aged brick wall. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. I wish I had this floor in my house. Actually, I, I, could, I could have this floor in my house. It just takes some work. <laughs> Too much work. Our facade is complete. The wall is complete. The floor is complete. I have taken uh, some of that trim molding that I used on the facade and cut a few little blocks off of it before I used it on the facade to create a table, a little architectural detail for inside. Here I have a silver frame that I'm going to attempt to make it into a marquee for the top of my facade and hopefully I can make it light up. That is the plan. That is the plan. Then I'm also going to use these two little skulls as little, you know how the old world buildings always had little gargoyles and whatnot? My building, the Oriole, will have skulls with a couple little corbels below them. Now comes the fun stuff. We need party favors, decorations, refreshments. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I love planning parties, don't you? So now for the really fun stuff, uh, these are some more of Tracy's amazing designs and these are vintage and Halloween and keep in mind she has much, much more than that to offer. So much more. Wait till you see the Christmas stuff I'm going to use later. Oh, so exciting. But I'm going to uh, take these and uh, you can see I've already sized them down to the appropriate um, proportions that I need for what I'm going to make and I've printed them all out. I will leave in the description box below the actual items of hers that I have used in case you want to because you know you do. So cute. Once I have printed them off, I have cut out all my little teeny tiny pieces because we're going to make some incredibly fun things. Well, if you're going to have a Halloween party, you need Halloween masks. So the first thing I did is I took this adorable little jack-o'-lantern faces, punched little holes, and added sticks. So we have a little tiny Halloween mask. Now for some crepe paper medallions. I took a little strip of crepe paper, probably about uh, seven, eight inches long, and I'm gonna fold it accordion style. And then once it's totally folded, accordion style. I'm going to fold it in half to designate the center point. I'm going to tie a little piece of embroidery thread in the middle. You can go straight to wire if you feel comfortable. I just thought I'd give you a little extra uh uh uh. <laughs> but then you wire it because we're going to hang it by wire. Then you're going to bring the ends together, both of them, and you're going to hot glue them. I'm using the black hot glue so it's not so in your face. And then I'm also going to fan it out gently and glue the opposite side. Once my little fan is complete, I will hot glue one of my adorable little cutouts right smack dab in the center. And then we have this beautiful little vintage party favor. So cute! I picked up these really, really, really inexpensive little beads um, from a thrift shop and I'm going to cut them down to make tiny little necklaces, party necklaces. I also picked up some shreds that I will be using and I'm going to be using a variety of drawer pulls, little drawer pulls and some plates and wood disc to make teeny tiny little 
cake pedestals. And I'm also going to be using some of my own foam cakes as desserts. What fun, tiny fun. And these teeny tiny foam balls will become little eyeballs. <laughs> the theater looks absolutely amazing, amazing. All the party decorations and refreshments are in place. Let's be the first to arrive. We want to get good seats. We arrive at the Oriole just before dark and magically, as if it senses our arrival, hello, the marquee light lights up. After admiring that beautiful marquee, you start to notice all the detail on the building. The wrought iron jack-o'-lanterns and the skulls and the corbels and the cornices, all so ornate and beautiful as any old world historical theater should be. As we move inside, we see hand-forged wrought iron. We see that beautiful, vintage, slightly cracked and crumbling brick wall. How beautiful. You can even see the archway that's been papered, papered in marble. And how about some desserts and treats? So yummy, so welcoming. Let's get a closer look at our party decorations. You can see our little medallions. And how about the embroidery thread used as streamers? Why not? And the posters that started it all line that back wall. Oh, look at all the treats. There's the eyeballs and our masks and the cakes. Yum, yum. More flyers and beads. A party is about to begin. And take a really good look at that beautiful floor. And thank you, Monica and Tracy, for joining me at this swinging vintage Halloween party. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Share it with your family, your friends, and anyone that loves teeny tiny cute little things and Halloween decor. You can follow me on Instagram and check out my shop on Etsy. If you want to support my channel, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. But stay tuned because Tracy's up next on this fabulous swinging vintage Halloween party playlist.